We are in the dark room. Uh, it has that yellow light, still pretty bright, but it's, it does not have the type of wavelength that will cure the emulsion. We're about to uh, expose and develop a screen with two film positives. <clears throat> this is the exposure you want to use for doing that. We call this the new arc. That is the brand down there, so new arc. And if we make sure these two clamps are open, we can lift the lid. Always lift the lid kind of slowly and lower it kind of slowly. You don't want it to accidentally slam down. This is a fairly expensive piece of equipment. And it's one of those pieces of equipment that every student has to use. So we want to treat it with a whole lot of respect. Uh, the way it works is pretty basic. Down there at the bottom is a really strong, very special light source. It's called a metal halide bulb. It gives off not only a lot of light, but a lot of ultraviolet light. That is the wavelength that will both cure the emulsion, but also blind you if you stare at it, or you know, sun sunburn you if, you if you expose your skin to it too long. And then we have this piece of glass so we're going to set film positives and then screen on top of this, close it up, and expose it. Now that light source uh, is a little unique in the sense that the longer it's on, the hotter it gets. And the hotter it gets, the more light it emits. Because of that, we cannot measure exposures with time because one second at the beginning is not much light. But one second at the end, when the bulb is really hot, is a lot of light. So we can, and also, if you were to expose immediately after somebody else, the bulb is already hot, and so yours would be different too. So we can't measure with time. Instead, this unit uses something called light units, L-T-U as an abbreviation. Right here, that little cylinder is a sensor. So during our exposure, that will be actually measuring how much light is coming off that bulb. And it'll tell us here on the readout. Uh, and that'll make a little more sense when I show you the operation of that in a minute. As you open this up and get ready, the first thing you want to do is make sure that the glass is clean. You can't have any moisture, no water, no other liquids. Um, you don't want dust. And you certainly don't want a scratch in the glass. There's a few scratches. Luckily, they are all out towards the periphery. But we really want to avoid scratches. That scratch will refract light in the exposure, causing a line in everybody's screen. So if there was a bad scratch near the center, that would be a real problem. And it costs about five, $600 to replace this really thick piece of glass. So again, we treat it with a lot of respect. If this needs to be cleaned, you go to the shelf right there. There's window cleaner. There's often a roll of paper towels. If there's not, there's also this dispenser here, okay? As you get your film positives, so here I have one Velvetone and one Ruby Lip. These each represent one layer of my screen print. This will be my first layer, and this will be my second. Spot color line art. I want to set them down on here so that they are right reading. I say it that way because imagine your image had text. You wouldn't want the text to be reversed. You want it to be right reading. There's no flip of the image in screen printing. So I should see my image here the way I want it to look in my print. And it's very easy, particularly with the ruby lift and particularly with an image that is fairly symmetrical, it's very easy to accidentally set it down, flip. 
Every screen printer will make this mistake at least once. And then they very rarely make it again. So always make sure that both films are right reading. Sometimes I even run my finger and make sure like, oh yeah, the ruby lift is on the top. Good. Next I'm going to grab my screen. It's in the drawing cabinet. Okay, so in the other video you saw me coat a screen. So now this is completely dry. <coughs> When I coat the screen, I immediately put it into the drying cabinet. 15 minutes later, it's dry, provided the fans in there are running. Every once in a while, we let the fans run 24 seven. So every once in a while, a fan will, the motor will go out. If that happens, it takes about an hour to dry, but generally 15 minutes. So you can see that this is nice and even. We have a couple little ridges there. That's not really a worry, so we'll, we'll be fine. Otherwise, it looks good. To get it up onto the exposure unit, the best thing is hold it like this. One hand like that, and see my elbow? It's on top, and my finger's below. That allows me the leverage to hold it to where I can move it without scraping it across the glass. So the screen needs to go pretty much centered to the glass. The images need to go pretty much centered to the screen, more or less. It does not need to be exact, but more or less. I need a certain amount of space between the edge of the image and the inside of the frame. Generally, I want this to be at least six inches. Same with the distance between the two images. I'm not going to print both of these at once. I'm going to do this one, and then later I'm going to do this one. So I want one to be safe while I'm printing the other one. So I want space there, and I want space there. This is a little bit less than that. <clears throat> so what I'll do is I'll carefully lift this. I'm going to move that velvetone over just about an inch and a half and move this ruby an inch and a half. And that looks good. Okay? You can see your image through the emulsion, so that helps you double check that. When you expose a film, you must have 100% contact between film positive and screen. They must be touching absolutely. Even a hair's breadth of space between those two allows the light to start bouncing around. It's not a good exposure. It doesn't work. The way this exposure unit achieves that is there's a vacuum pump that's going to suck out all the oxygen from beneath this neoprene blanket when I start it. And that neoprene is going to contour itself perfectly to the screen because all the air inside here is going to get sucked out. These black cords get casually draped on top of the screen, and the only function of those is to ensure that there is an air passage out from inside the screen. So it's got two passages now. That's all you do with those cords is just casually drape them on there. Then you lower this, making sure that in fact the screen is centered to the glass and to the lid. Now if you look close here, you see that hole right there in the lid. That must be covered. If that is left uncovered, the air is just going to keep going in that hole and it'll never reach proper suction. So this mess right here we add there to cover that hole. The little rubber pads always fall off within two weeks of buying a new exposure unit. Notice the metal pin inside there. That metal pin must go on the hook there. You cannot use the rubber part exclusively on that part. So you bring this up, make sure the pin's on there, and lock. Same thing on this side. 
you can see the metal pin a little bit better on this one on the top and lock. Okay. Now we're going to turn it on. There's the power switch right there. This is a touch sensitive screen. At the top, you see seven seconds. That is the amount of time that the vacuum pump will continue to run uh, before the light comes on. We never check that one, or change that one rather. The next one is 70, and there you see the LTU. That's the light units. So that's our real exposure. Sometimes you might need to change that. If you do, hit the 70, and then put in whatever exposure you want. Now for your Velvetone and your Ruby Lift, I want you to do 70. So you would do seven, zero, and enter, and so it's at 70. That's all you do, and then you would hit start. Now when I hit start, the vacuum pump is going to start running, and the light is not gonna come on yet. The light's gonna come on automatically. But first, it has to suck all the oxygen out. Notice that right here, there's this nice rubber bead that's touching the glass. That has to make a really good seal with the surface of the glass. If it doesn't, air will just keep seeping in. So sometimes, not frequently, but once in a while, when I hit start, this will not go down, and it's because this is not making a seal. The solution to that is quite simple. Just grip like this for a few seconds. It'll start to go down, it'll form a seal, and at that point you can let go. So doing that, I hit start. I may or may not need it, but I'll just grip there for a minute. And you see the neoprene blanket really starting to sink. I can let go now. And you see this really starting to contour itself nicely to everything in there. You can see that it's, it's measuring the suction level. And when it reaches a certain point, which is like 14, uh, I take it back, it's whatever it is, 15, the light comes on. And look at it right here. So ensure on the edge of the glass that the light is in fact on. It starts at 70 light units and it slowly starts to count down. Notice that it's gonna speed up. That's the bulb getting hotter. So when it reaches zero LTU, the light will automatically go off. So now we just wait for that to go down. I always want to get um, a, like a rubber uh, fake hand and put it underneath there because the neoprene contours so perfectly that you'd see the hand really articulated through the neoprene and it would be kind of freaky. While that's finishing, point the camera up here. So these are tests and instructions about how to use that. So the very basic instruction is right there. You can say, oh, it's a micron pin or ebony pencil. I'm gonna do 35, 40, 45 light units or ink or China marker 60, 70, 80. Ruby lift, you can do 100, but 70 will still work. On this here, that is an actual film positive there. And then that is a screen print made from that. Mm -hmm. And it's divided into vertical bands. And the ver each vertical band is a different exposure. So now when it's done, it says exposure complete. And we hit OK. Goes back to the normal. We lift the two clamps so we can hear the oxygen rushing in there. You don't want to lift until the neoprene is kind of relaxed and then lift carefully and slowly. You don't want to pull the screen up with suction and then have it drop. Okay. We move the cords carefully to each side. Lift up this side, elbow there, fingers on the underside. That allows me to lift it so that it can be used by the next person. I'm going to take up my films and I just shut that lid like that. And that's it. The, uh, you can hear 
in the machine a couple of fans working to blow air. That's going to cool off the bulb. That's important. So we don't want to turn this off immediately after an exposure. We want to let it run for 10 minutes, and then we can turn it off. That 10 minutes will cool off the bulb, and that greatly increases the lifespan of the bulb. And the bulb itself is 250 bucks, so we don't like to waste it. So we're now going to go out to the washout room. You go ahead and go first. Go ahead. Uh, keep a plan, yeah. Keep it recording, rather. Now notice the different color of the cured emulsion and the uncured emulsion. So the uncured is more orangish, and this is more magenta-ish. So even now, before we wash it with water, we can tell that mm, things are looking good. <clears throat> we can also see the, the lines of the line art, how they're a little bit more orangish. So all that's looking good. Now we're going to use the garden sprayer to develop this. So I reach over, turn the, the faucet on on the cold side. I'm going to get the top of the screen wet with water. This is just water. I'm not going to press all the way down. I don't want a stream. That's a stream. I'm going to barely press it so that it's a fan. And now you can really see the difference between uncured emulsion and cured. When I develop a screen, I don't want to remove the uncured emulsion with pressure. I want to remove it by letting the water dissolve it. So I just get it wet, and then I flip it and get this side wet. It's about to start washing out. There it goes. Extremely important. Any emulsion that did not get cured must get washed out now. So you want to wash long enough, say a minute, minute and a half, that any uncured emulsion gets dissolved and washes away completely. Even water here might have residual dissolved emulsion. You don't want that to re-dry in the image area. So I've given it a nice good watch on the back side. <laughs> Give it one more on the top of the screen, too. Sometimes little bits of emulsion at the periphery don't get cured. Um, if, if that's the case, then you should wash that off now. Um, again, any emulsion that did not cure in the exposure needs to be washed off now. So once we think we've got it, shake it for a moment, and then you've got to hold it up to the light source. And that's how you can tell, is it open? Is my image area open? Without that light source, you won't really know. So if you think you've got to do a little more washing, then put it back in and wash it a little bit more. If you think it's done, turn off the water. Hang up that garden sprayer again. And this goes beneath the fans. Here. And then, of course, the fans get turned on on that um, surge protector switch on the back side. Go ahead and stop the video.